Good afternoon. Today we are here with the student executives and Mr. Gufu. Mr. Gufu, would you like to give a short introduction about who you are and what you do? Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to speak today. I'm a ex Chawney boy. I studied here some years ago. Um, I studied in a corridor not too far from where we're sat at the moment. Um, after, after completing my studies, I, I specialised in computers and I've been working in IT and application development for a number of years. My current role is around parent and student engagement and developing apps and services that help everyone to be able to support educational goals. And I'm also a trustee here at the Chiltern Learning Trust. So this brings us to our topic today, mental health. Have you had any experience regarding mental health or have you coped with it well or anything of the sort? So yes, I have had experience professionally um, in mental health. I used to work at Public Health England, who are um, centre stage at the moment in the current COVID situation that we're in today. I developed a number of digital products and services that were focused around physical health and also mental health as well. Some of those initiatives included working with charities like MIND um, and others that were leading in the space around mental health and, and understanding within. Could you give us a short summary of what mental health is? Yeah, so mental health is quite similar for many of us in regards to all of our health. So we all have a type of health, our physical health, we all know where we stand on physical health and how perhaps healthy we would consider ourselves. Mental health is developing more and more in terms of our understanding around mental health in a similar way. Everybody has mental health. We're on a spectrum of mental health. And for us, really, it's thinking about how we deal with, whether it be challenges or opportunities, how we reflect upon those circumstances and how we cope in those circumstances. Just as you would if you were to go to the gym today or if you were to try and run a 5K, we all know we'd be at different places on that. But if you were, once you engaged in it, you'd need the level of endurance, you need the level of stamina, you need to have prepared, you need to have eat in the right way. Similarly, mental health has a whole number of ingredients related to it. And depending on your endurance and ability and how much you've trained as well, you can develop in your mental health. There's, that's, a, that's very, very interesting. So over the past few years, even before pre-lockdown, the cases of mental health issues ranging from depression, anxiety, these type of things, has been increasing at, at, a, at a very quick rate, especially within young people. And why do you think that may be the case? So I think there are a number of reasons. I think, of course, that the lockdown, the fear related to what it means, the impact of it, um, we are in the height of coronavirus reaching a peak that we've never seen before. And, and I think now, probably more than last year, after having experienced it, the anxiety that's building up, the fact that we can't engage in society like we would normally have conversations with people in a normal way has definitely had an impact. Worries about the future, thinking about what may come, what impact it's had on exams, what impact it's had on future opportunities. Of course, impact upon our friends and our family. I'm sure all of us have experienced somebody in our households or in our extended families that's been impacted by coronavirus. So I think there are a range of different reasons, whether it be as a result of societal change, whether it be the reflection upon ourselves, worry about things that we can't control and those that we can as well. But I also think as well that it's an opportunity for us. Every challenge is an opportunity. If you were to run that 5K and you never run one, you probably think it's, it's beyond your ability. But once you've achieved it, you realize that you've reached the top of that mountain, you realize you've achieved that peak, you're so much stronger for having done it. And, and this circumstance, the COVID-19 situation we're in today is very similar. Each of us coming out of it will come out stronger, more resilient, more robust. We're developing better ways of understanding ourselves, society, what we appreciate, how much it means to have a family member or a friend by you. I think that level of appreciation experience, we couldn't have experienced without where we've been. Wow, thank you. Talking about lockdown and school closures, what advice would you give to someone who would want to retain good mental health through the period that we're currently facing right now? So I think, think about um, what it's done, what you've had to do to develop. Adaptation, adaptability is probably one of the greatest skills that anyone can develop. And we're all going to come across new circumstances, new situations that we're in. 
working, I, I work from home at the moment and I often think about my son. So I'm, I'm downstairs working on my desk and he's upstairs working on his desk. And I often think about how he's prepared for that prior to having to go to the workplace. One of the challenges in the past was around how do you transition from studies into the workplace? This has almost flattened the landscape. So everybody has to, to some degree, work from home. And then studying and developing the skills to communicate, developing the technical knowledge to be able to do that remotely, as well as influence, learn from others. Those are great skills. So I think I think always consider your situation and think about where's the opportunity there? Where's the learning? Where are the things that you can take away from that experience? Of course, it does mean that you need to be a lot more motivated. You need to be more timely. You need to manage your own schedule. You haven't got teachers or perhaps others around you that would be supporting you in that. Um, but at the same time, it's given us opportunities where perhaps we may have been embarrassed to raise our hands in person in the classroom. You've got a digital mechanism that means that you can raise and have personal conversations. So I think consider your personal circumstance, the changes that you've had to adapt to and how you can learn from that, what you can do um, to prepare yourself for the transition back to school after this point in time, and also what you can start fine-tuning now. Uh, I used to commute into London and various places across the country. You'd all travel into school at one point or another. You don't have to do that at the moment. You're saving on time. What could you do in that additional time? Um, are there any ways that you could prevent mental health issues and what can parents do to help reduce the impact of mental health? So as we mentioned, everybody is on a spectrum when it comes to mental health. That means all of us in this room and everybody watching this is somewhere on that spectrum. There's no prevention. If I was to ask you, can you prevent physical health issues? Can you present, prevent illness? Of course, you can make some preparation to ensure, and we'll go on to talk about some of the prevention for COVID. You can take um, measures to try and protect yourself from that. However, your health is still present and your mental health will always be present throughout that as well. The question I suppose is how do we deal with those and what coping mechanisms can we start developing to deal with challenges? Some of those coping mechanisms may be the people that we surround ourselves with. One of the reasons that we, I'm sure we're all more conscious about, we're more connected to devices now and social media seems to have just mushroomed into this. It, it's become society now. Mm. Everything it almost <clears throat> exists in a digital plane now. And for us to think about that and think about who we would like to surround ourselves with digitally, um, whether they're good influences, positive influences that are helping us, how we're considering those that we'd compare ourselves to, we'd relate to, in the past may have been our classmates, now maybe somebody in a different country, maybe somebody who's on a, operating in a very different way. So thinking about um, the people that you surround yourself with, friends, family, thinking about, you, you asked the question around how can families best support. Families can support by being present. And, and this was prior to COVID as well as it is after. I think taking interest, although our parents may not necessarily have been through the same education as us, I know my parents didn't, their concern about my education didn't decrease in any way. They would always be on me and say, have you done your homework? Have you, is there anything you need? Are you spending the right amount of time? Even if they didn't understand, they would annoyingly speak to my teachers, yeah, <laughs> try to, to find out how I was doing. That concern, and that chasing really is probably the best thing that we all have today. And we may consider it nagging, but in fact, that's love. That's somebody who cares about you, who wants the best for you. And having somebody in your life that is able to, whether it be chase you, nag you or otherwise, that's a, that's a real blessing because not everybody has that. So uh, think about the people you surround yourself with. Think about you know, what they're intending and, and likewise what you're giving back to them as well. Um, COVID, if anything, has brought families together in a way that perhaps we've never had in the past. Hopefully not still on the same devices, but in fact talking to each other now. Perhaps sharing meals where you couldn't in the past. Perhaps having opportunities to do things at home together. Now, I've just This morning I did a, a, a very weird oatly breakfast, but I did it with my son. And he was making his breakfast, I was making my breakfast. So perhaps cooking. You know, I started gardening in, in lockdown. It's quite interesting. So uh, partly for my own role, but also growing new vegetables. These are all things we can do at home. So I think learning is something you can definitely do remotely. And then doing things with family members, doing things with those that are still close to you will definitely help and support. Of course, if there are any specific medical conditions and mental health, just like physical health, there are times at which you need to go and consult a specialist. So if anybody does require a specialist, it's always important to recognize 
The mental health is a developing area, as is physical health. And just like every one of us responds differently to uh, different circumstances, physically, mentally we do as well. So it's really important to seek the advice of a specialist. And now more than ever, people are consuming social media. There's another lockdown, people are attached to their phones. What are your thoughts on it? Do you think social media is bad for those people or do you think it's good? Well, interestingly, interestingly, I develop apps and services on social media. Um, so I, th I think that social media, if you just to take the words apart a little bit, social and media, both of them have existed throughout time. Society, communities, groups, generally have always existed and, and uh, it's perhaps in a different context. The digital context is new to us and media has always existed, whether there's paper-based or conversations like these ones. We need to understand and think about, just like with mental health, we need to develop our understanding of it and understand the risks associated with it, the positives that it can bring and potentially the disadvantages it may have as well. And then think about how we manage, just like you would manage perhaps a um, a group of people that you didn't want to get involved in or perhaps were considered bad company in the same way how do you manage that in an online context interestingly as i mentioned this this recording this conversation can only be shared on social media so look at the benefit of us even being able to have this conversation in the first place so always recognize that there are goods and perhaps areas of negativity that we can focus on the question really for us is where do we want to give our attention and our time and being consumed by either a particular type of conversation or a particular type of perspective can be harmful. Um, so it's important to, first of all, not lose the fact that you're sitting next to people oftentimes when you're on those social media. And having a conversation with someone else is very different from a conversation with a digital device. Um, however, the benefits of using social media, the inspiration that can be derived from it, and the opportunities we probably all have to learn from it, in a remote learning context are phenomenal as well. So I think it's it's about balance. And, and with mental health as well as physical health, it's important to think about those things you want to let into your life, those things that you are grateful for, those things that you can appreciate in different ways. Um, and having conversations like these, having discussion and debate really helps to increase our awareness about it. Something which is very worrying for our community right now What's your view on the speculations around the intake of vaccines? Okay. As mentioned, disclaimer, I worked at Public Health England here. So <laughs> obviously I have a perspective around public health and I, uh, like anybody, want to ensure the best health and well-being for every person within society. That means that there will be new challenges like coronavirus and its development and the mutations we've seen along that period of time. And there'll be responses to that. Ultimately, the intention and the uh, will behind all of this is positive and everybody is doing their best. And we've seen with a number of the vaccines that have now been released that we have a number of options, both of varying levels of uh, success and uh, efficacy. Importantly, I think this conversation is related to mental health and social media. A lot of what is being circulated about vaccines today um, isn't always founded on true evidence, isn't always developed through good understanding and research. And it's very difficult. We've had a very short period of time nationally, globally, to come up with vaccines to a really challenging problem immediately. So things have been sped up, no doubt. As to should anybody that is vulnerable seek um, help and seek the benefit of a vaccine, absolutely, everybody should. And in fact, those that are vulnerable, even more so. Um, of course, every medic and every professional that's involved will ensure that they've checked to see if there are going to be any particular side effects. And like anything, we're working with an amazing creation here. We're working with something that we don't really understand, both in the human body and a vaccine that's mutating at such pace. There's always a level of learning. And education is always about learning from those experiences and seeing how we can develop. I don't think there's any nefarious, any untoward intent behind the development of the vaccinations. And I think as a community, we should keep learning and Chawney and the Children Trust are all about ensuring not just that we learn in the classroom, but that we can continue to learn throughout our lives and understand how we can benefit other people with that knowledge. Thank you, Mr. Kafour. That was a very interesting dis discussion. I hope the viewers at home can take a lot of information from this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you.